Hello, I am Patrick Cauley with Keystone Elder Law. This is Keynotes, a series of conversations about issues affecting the elderly, people with special needs, and veterans. Today, I am joined by Barry Gordon. Uh, many, many people from central Pennsylvania will recognize Barry from his former business, uh, Quality Cleaners in Lemoyne. But these days, Barry spends an awful lot of time and energy on Senior Tech Tutor. So Barry, thank you for joining me and I'll let you tell people what Senior Tech Tutor is. It's my pleasure to be with you. Thank you for having me. Well, Senior Tech Tutor was started out of an idea that I had a few years ago when so many of my friends were struggling with their new technology or their technology period. It didn't necessarily have to be new, but I understood what their problems were and I kept solving them and I kept saying to myself, gee, I really like doing this stuff. And I was ready to retire from my business anyway, and I really wanted to try something different, basically to reinvent myself. And that's the spawn of the beginning of the of idea that I might be able to do something for people. What I re also realized is that seniors are really in need of this technology, and yet they really don't have the tools available to them to be able to use it properly. And and that's when I really started generating an idea, oh, maybe I should call myself a senior tech tutor because I'm getting to that age also. And that's, that's how it started. Yes, well, you know, it's, it's ironic because we are having this conversation at a, a time when everybody is confined to their homes in the spring of 2020. Who knows when people will listen to this, but, you know, they will certainly recall being confined to their homes. And, uh, you know, our clients at Keystone Elder Law are uh, mostly in uh, facilities such as assisted living facilities or skilled nursing homes where they're not only uh, isolated from their families, but they're isolated from each other. So it's a time of intense isolation. But it occurred to me in preparing for this conversation that many people became isolated well before the pandemic hit because they didn't keep up with technology. And suddenly, all of their family were, were sharing photos of grandchildren or videos or even having uh, conversations over FaceTime or other technologies. And because they had written it off, they just were falling further and further behind and they weren't able to participate in that kind of connection. So I'm sure that Senior Tech Tutor uh, really fills a basic need of connection in that way. You're exactly right. One of the things I always joke about is because uh, I do a lot of seminars and uh, I talk to a lot of seniors and uh, I always joke about it, you know, like we buy these nice little phones and they're all beautiful and they come in these gorgeous boxes and you open up the box and like they have great um, packaging, but I don't know about you, but I'm looking for the directions. I mean, there's no directions in any of these devices you buy. So where are the directions anyway? I want to find them. And that's where I come in. I bring them the directions right to their home on anything that they're actually working on. So I'm not out there telling you what to buy. I want to work on what you want to know. And so there's this much to know. And I only want to teach you what you want to know, which may be this much. And that's really a, a very different thought process than going through every possible scenario of technology because you don't need to know everything. And I'm sure many people who uh, contact you are overcoming a great deal of fear that there's so much technology and it's gotten away from them. So how are they ever going to learn it all? And I think that's an important approach that you're going to say, well, hold on, let's prioritize. Let's figure out what you really need and what you, what you would really enjoy learning. And that's the way you're going to learn it the best anyway. So right. you, know, you mentioned cell phones. Um, I'm sure people contact you about uh, laptops or uh, you know maybe cable TV hookups. But Take me just through generally the, the categories of services that, that people call on you for. Well, my card and my website really kind of tells it all in the sense that um, I'm trying to connect you with the whatever device you have. So I'll go over the cell phone. I'll go over the computer. And some people don't need all that information. They just know that their computers are bad. Let me just take you through a scenario when I walk in the door. First of all, you've invited me into your home, and I thank you for that. Much like we're having this conversation, there's a certain amount of trust that is built up right away. 
And that's something that I think every businessman has to do is they have to sell themselves. And I think for me in a senior market, trust as in your market, because you're doing elder care law, that's even more defined. So I have to make sure that we have a relationship to begin with. And then the first step I do is I do an evaluation of their technology. For example, what are their internet connections? How do they can get connected to people across the world, across the country, relatives, whatever? Are they on a, a computer system that really works? Like, for example, I'll take you to the computer store if you want me to. And I, I have a, a hard drive. We're, we know what they are. We used to buy computers based on RAM and hard drive. How big can you get these things? And they're basically a big record player inside there. And it stores data, right? But it's a record player because it, it spins just like a record. Well, the computers are going away from, by the way, this one that I'm holding is particularly heavy. And laptops used to be particularly heavy. They're now very light. But those kind of technologies are going away. So we're going to what we call solid state hard drives. But hard drives are not the big deal anymore because it's all about the cloud. And when I go into people's homes, one of the things they said, what the hell is the cloud? And they wanna know what that is. And we, we talk about it and we go through step by step as to what it is. But I'm also evaluating your internet connection. I'm also evaluating what kind of connection do you have on your cell phone? Maybe you want to connect your cell phone to your car and don't have any idea what Bluetooth is. Um, or maybe you don't understand what Wi-Fi is. So we'll go through step-by-step step evaluating what you have. And the other really big thing that people should know all the time is that their devices need to be updated. Their cellular phones are doing a pretty good job, but Android pushes out a, a update only a couple times a year. Apple does it much more often, and it, it almost becomes intrusive, where you, you get this red dot. You must do it, you must do it, you must do it. But anyway, those are the kind of things that, are, are, that people forget. They forget to update. And on their computers, it's really a big deal. Um, when you're on Windows 10, which is what, the, what most people should be on if they're on a Windows product, they're not updating them. Why? because it says it automatically updates. It doesn't. One of the big flaws in Windows is that it doesn't automatically update. When you have an uh, uh, Apple product, they do push that update and they tell you, hey, update is available. I will tell you that on a lot of Windows machines, they do work sometimes, the updates, but many, on many occasions, I go into people's homes, I see that the, the computer has not been updated for a long time. So that's a big issue and something that everyone should be aware of. And it's really sort of one of those conditions of modern life that we all have a, a drawer full of cords, charging cables and what have you, simply because there's been upgrades in the technology and now we don't know what goes with what or what to do with the old, with the old products. So I, I'm sure that's one of the first things you have to do is just determine are things connected by cables? Do they still work? Uh, are we able to charge this? Um, maybe people want to get rid of old uh, equipment and do you help them with that? Yes, I do. One of the big things that uh, um, I'm used to going into people's homes is, A, do I want to keep this equipment or do I want to get a new one? And what do I do with the old piece of equipment if I do have a new one? So I evaluate that and what most people want is to get all of their information off the old computer and that's really, you should do that for sure. But the big thing that they want to save are pictures. And so, so here's where we go with the cloud space again. So cloud space is usually free. You can certainly pay for it. There's a lot of free opportunities though. I go in, I take the old computer, I'll put those pictures up on the cloud and then I'll give you an access to it and everybody in the family can access those pictures. So you don't have to lose those pictures. And I have lots of families who have done that. And then what I'll do is I'll wipe the hard drive, get all the data off the old data, and then I'll uh, donate it. Where do I donate it? Not to a landfill, but to a place called Mission Central. Um, it's right in Mechanicsburg. They do a great job in the sense they take everything, including those old cords you mentioned, uh, everything. And they'll actually take four or five old computers and put it together and make one good one 
because they have Microsoft uh, uh, technicians right on the premises. And so, and then they'll give those away or sell them for 10 or $15 for people who really don't have a computer and might be slower and may not work as well as your brand new one. But guess what? It's still great because a lot of people don't have a computer. And today's market, in today's world, right this minute during the pandemic, I can't think of a better mission than that. One other thing that I thought I should mention based on the pandemic issues is Comcast has, has rolled out a really nice opportunity for people who are um, less fortunate. Uh, all you have to do is prove your inability to pay, and they give you um, internet service for $10.99 a month. I can't think of a greater thing for a large company like that to do for people who really can't afford. And just give them a call. I know that that's Those are for people. Yeah, that's become even like a, a legislative issue is that certain parts of our state don't have broadband access. And, and more and more, we're starting to see that it's not just a nice luxury to have. It's becoming more and more something that we rely on, whether it's in telemedicine, contacting healthcare professionals, um, just and, and really, you know, just to stay connected with family is sometimes uh, good for your physical health, good for your mental health. So it's, it's becoming more and more a necessity of life to do that. So, you know, you've taken us so far through, um, you know, just dealing with the internet connection upgrades uh, to existing or replacements of existing uh, hardware that people have. Um, you, you've talked about the, the, the phone a little bit. Um, you know, when I think of, of technology that might affect older people, you know, in my, in my line of work, my first thoughts are, uh, do, are they getting the appropriate care and are they safe and free from any sort of uh, abuse or exploitation? So in the first category, I know there's all kinds of technology these days for uh, managing medication, um, you know, for uh, the, the American Bar Association just came out with a, a new app, and I'm sure it's one of many where you can store your advanced directives, your legal documents in case uh, you can't speak to your doctors because you're unconscious and, and you know, that helps them, you know, it's easily shared and, and that helps everybody know uh, your important contacts. Um, so things like that go into uh, health and safety. I, and I think there's, you know, there's wearable technology, but I think there's also aspects of the phone where if you fall, you know, there's automatic notifications to, to certain people. So that's one part. And then on the, the you know, pre preventing elder abuse and, and financial exploitation, uh, you know, I, I, won't, I wonder if there's ways to set up automatic notifications that bank withdrawals are happening and so they can check whether, uh, whether that's happening. And so can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, well, first of all, after I figure out what, what's going on in the house, um, we figure out what you want to learn, and then I do leave individual cards with step-by-step -step instructions in addition to all the things that they need to know. For example, lots of people don't know what their uh, Wi-Fi network password is. Passwords are a big deal anyway um, for all of us, and I'm not blaming any one group, but I can tell you it's the biggest issue that we have right now is passwords. So I always recommend a, a one-password password manager okay so they only have to remember one um but you better remember that one because you're in trouble if you don't and i've had clients that have forgotten those one passwords and they're very used to it after a while it becomes second nature you just hit that one password and everything's done but anyway that's one aspect of it so i'm teaching you all different aspects of the software that's involved with all this hardware that you've bought but you don't know how to use it um so i'll leave you step-by-step -step instructions one of the big issues that people say to me all the time, what do I need to know all this stuff? And I think you hit the nail on the head. There's two things that come to mind. One is that when you are going to the doctor and there's all kinds of new things that are available to you, and I'm certainly talking about outside the pandemic, but for example, every doctor wants you to open up a portal, a patient portal, because they want you to be able to uh, see what tests are coming up for you, what, what medications you're on, they want you to see it. They don't want you to have to call in and ask someone in their, in their support staff how to get that information. They want you to have that readily available to you. I can't think of an easier way than in your portal. Well, people don't really want to do that. 
Well, did you know that your doctor gets a little bit of extra money just by opening up the portal? Because that's part of his Medicare uh, package that he has to deal with and getting reimbursed. So it's really an important aspect to our everyday life. People who are seniors right now and just getting onto the program, I will tell you it's, it's not a big deal, but everyone who's been on the program for 15 years, and now you're asking me to open a portal, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what that is. Can you help me? And so doctors are gonna are creating these the support staff to actually get you online. I can help you with that. You mentioned banking. That's something I do not get involved with. I won't get involved with. I feel like that's a, a step in the wrong direction for me and a liability. So I'm very careful about where my line ends. I'm happy to show you that it exists. How you get it, that's up to you and your family. And I really think that that's an important message that I'd like to put out there. Because I think family has to be involved when it comes to all this very uh, important information that you want to keep close to the family. And on somebody who doesn't have a family, then they call somebody like you to take over that information. That's my opinion. Right. A couple of notes on what you said. First of all, I think I saw on your website that you do those uh, actual physical cards that you leave behind so that somebody can review what they learned and uh, have a resource just to look at. You know, of course, it's a sort of old school, very untechy approach, but that's how you ease somebody into learning the, the technology and get them more comfortable. So I, I think those, those written cards are a great tool. Um, and also about the passwords, there, there are so many passwords and it used to be that you could just have uh, you know, a relatively simple password, but it has to be more and more complicated now to prevent against hacking. So you're even prompted to, to use different you know, capitalization and different types of characters to, uh, to make it harder to predict uh, so you don't just use the same password and you just don't use the names of your children everywhere because somebody could figure that out pretty quickly. Um, so that's a really important one too. And that comes up in, in my legal practice as well because we have, uh, you know, more and more, you know, for, for a state administration, for example, when someone passes away, if you want somebody to be your executor and to go in and close your bank accounts, um, they need to know, know what accounts there are and more and more bills are coming by email. So if they don't know, if they don't have access to your email, then they're never going to find that you have an account with a certain bank or investment firm, uh, and they're never going to go looking there. And then there might be another password for the bank and the, the investment firm. So, you know, we are trying to find ways to uh, help people at least make a list of the accounts they have or the emails that they have, and then probably a more secure place for, for the passwords. So that's, that bit of information is, is really important. Yeah, one of the things I wanted to mention is the idea of a digital vault. So what do I mean by that? It's kind of exactly what you just said, all that information. Well, the piece of paper that you have it typed up on or printed out on, or you emailed it to somebody, hey, I can't find the email, whatever. But if you have a personal vault, out on the cloud, and we talked about the cloud a few minutes ago, how important that could be. Because someone who doesn't live near you or isn't involved in your life, but you've given them the password to that cloud account, now you've got an opportunity for them to download that or access all that information that you just mentioned by just having it virtually up on the cloud. Uh, there aren't any, I, I wish I could give your, the audience a really good sense of security that that's really the right thing to do 100%. There isn't anything that I've come across that is 100%. One of the big issues that we're having today is security in general on the internet, and that's what scares a lot of people. So I will tell you that we just went over a few minutes ago the several things that are really important. One is to keep your devices up to date. You're doing the best you can. Uh, making sure you know who you e is you're emailing you. For example, if there's any misspellings, any unusual characters in the line that you see in the email, don't open it. Don't even bother to open it. Just delete it. If somebody really needed to get you, they'll send another email or they'll call you. So phishing is a big issue. Um, and don't take that phone call that doesn't make any sense. I had a client who was sure she had won $8 million. And it became a big struggle to make her understand that that was not 
actually a phone call that was worthwhile taking. So those are the kind of things you can do, but which are pretty easy. You know, um, I've seen uh, I've seen you share. Uh, I think you have a YouTube channel. I know you do because I I subscribe to it. Um, I've seen you share on other social media that every Tuesday you have a two minute tip, and they're great. They cover a range of topics. Um, but could you just give a flavor if if somebody went uh, and subscribed to your YouTube channel or just went to YouTube and used the search engine to search for senior tech tutor, it would come up. Uh, what are what are some of the topics you cover with your two minute tips and what have been the most popular ones? Well, then one of the most popular ones, it couldn't be more timely. And that is I have a two minute tip just on conference calling, video conference calling, but also how do you get people to be in a conference call without the video? A lot of people want to just be able to conference call or two people are calling at the same time almost. How can I get that? That's a two minute tip. Uh, one of my favorites and one I got the most feedback from, I think, recently anyway, is about scanning documents right from your smartphone. Most people don't realize how easy it is. And being a lawyer, I think you'd want to know that. Uh, actually, anybody who's involved with any kind of attorney would want to know how to scan documents very easily so they can get them to their attorney and you can share them so easily from any of your smartphones. That's really a helpful thing because I do the how to do it step by step by step in only two minutes. That's a challenge. I'm sure it is. And you're right. We attorneys do like documents, but we don't always need them in paper form anymore. So uh, if you can, if you can do it with your phone, that's great too. So um, I, I think we've covered a lot and I'm sure you could speak in detail about uh, you know, any one of these topics for a longer period of time. So I hope we can make this a recurring conversation. Um, in the meantime, where do people get a hold of you? How can they get in touch if, if this suddenly speaks to them and they realize they do have a need that, that you can help them with? So it's pretty easy. First thing I, I prefer, if, you, if you'd like, is to give me a call. My phone number is 717-831-8077. Uh, you can certainly email me, barry at seniortechtutor.com. Those are the two easiest ways to get me. Um, I, w I did, before we sign off, I do want to share uh, a screen with everybody because I think lots of uh, seniors are looking for apps, especially right now during this pandemic. How can we stay in, in touch with people? What docs, um, how are we dealing with our medications? I just want to share quickly uh, this, one, uh, this one screen and we'll see if we can get this up. Yeah, we'll try that. Yeah. So this is a, a list of different apps that you can download from the internet. Many of them, are, I think all of these except for Pillboxy are absolutely free. Okay, so if you have an Android phone, you probably want to go to the uh, Google Play Store. These are all really nice things to, to uh, download. Or if you have an iPhone, you want to go to the App Store. Uh, AARP has a really good uh, app, WebMD magnifying glass with light. How many times have we looked for something? We have the light, but we don't have a magnifying glass. That's an app that you can download together. Uh, YouTube, of course, that's an easy one right now. Pandora is a really good audio. Uh, there's uh, Spotify, there's other ones. Let me just mention Google Photos quickly. Lots of people are missing out on a free op opportunity. If you're having trouble with your phone, like it's clogged up with pictures, because we all love to take pictures right now, and it's easy to do, but they're filling up your memory, you can easily download Google Photos, upload your photos from your phone to Google Photos at, for absolutely for free. All you need is a Google account. Really, really important, I think. Pillboxy, this is a really good old app. It helps remind people for, about their pills and how to, how, um, when to take them. It actually sends you re reminders. Metasafe is another opportunity, same thing, kind of thing. Take a look, see which one you like better. Lumosity, it's all about the brain, keeping you stimulated through different kinds of puzzles. Words with Friends is another fun Scrabble type of uh, game that you can play. It also helps with your mind. And old time radio, if you're really a big old time radio fan, boy, that's really a fun thing to do. Anyway, those are the couple things. 
And this will be on video, so you can pause that and write them down for yourself. I'm going to go back myself and, and look at some of those. I will, I will say that I'm doing my part for my own parents by playing words with friends with my mother every day. So, you Good know, for you. And hopefully that's <laughs> keeping my brain sharp. Not that you would know it from, from hearing me speak on this video. But uh, Barry, it's been, it's been great uh, talking to you. Thank you for all of these insights. Like I said, I hope that we can, uh, we can do this again because there's just so much to get into. And um, uh, I think people will find this really helpful. So I will post the information for Senior Tech Tutor when I post this video. And I hope that people will get in contact with you directly. But thanks again. Barry. Great. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to this being an ongoing conversation. Have a good day.